What's up YouTube? So today I wanna to talk about how to create asterisk style chord stabs. So this is something that's used quite often in asterisk tracks and in full on Scitrance in general. It's a kind of like offbeat chord. I wanna discuss a couple of the key features to making these chords. Anyway, let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so I think one of the most important things is the placement of where you trigger the chord. I think that's gonna be one of the most effective ways of getting it to sound really, really good. These kinds of things aren't too complex in terms of, you know, the notes that are chosen in terms of the sound design and that kind of thing. I think it's more about finding the groove that specifically works. So in a previous video, I did outline how I make my grids and stabs, how I lay them out. So it's very important to kind of get a groove going before trying to dive in there and actually start to experiment with the sound design and that kind of thing. Because often you can get, you know, knee deep into the sound design and figure out that the groove just doesn't work. So anyway, I've got some simple sounds that I've thrown together here in a grid-like pattern. I wanna show you what I've done here. So the inspiration from this was taken from a track called Asterix Adventure Mode. It was a comment on one of my recent videos, you know, asking to do this kind of stab. And I actually use it quite often, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to talk about it. So let me show you the progression of these kind of stabs that I've got going here. Um, this one is more of a ghost note, so it's not really important to the groove, but I'll show you as we mix it in how it kind of fits in there. So in that previous video, when I was talking about the grids and stuff, I did talk about how, you know, often with this kind of thing, it's nice to uh, say, for example, we've got, we've got a, a traditional minor chord. What I'll often do is take the top note, like the highest note and shift it one octave down. This often gives the chord a slightly darker feel, but still retains the exact same notes within the chord. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the traditional minor chord, and then I'm gonna shift the top note an octave down and you can kind of see the difference. You see how it's kind of feels a little bit darker when you shift that note down. Okay, so let's get into the sound design. How do we actually make the sound here? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this track. Um, we can dive in here to this and I'm going to initialize it and we can start building it again from scratch. So the main element of the sound is really fine tuning the envelopes to get that perfect movement. So, you know, you'll notice the main difference between the finished sound and the sound is that it's that transient and release of the sound. Um, in the finished sound, it's a much stronger transient and a very faint tail. You're almost simulating the idea of reverb, but in the actual sound design process using the envelopes and stuff. So what I wanna show you here is, um, I actually do want a tiny bit of attack because I want a kind of slightly late feeling to the sound. And I also want a slight amount of delay, but ever so slight. It's almost as if we don't wanna hear it in the sound, but this helps to kind of get the sound to poke a little bit out of the mix because it's not exactly on the transients of the kick or on the transients of any other sort of sound that's on the grid. So 
So in Vital, you can actually double click on this uh, zoom icon and it'll zoom to a much easier kind of size to work with. So here again, it's all about kind of fine tuning this envelope to get that like nice release tail. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to put full unison onto voice one. And then what I want to do is I want to add a second voice over here. So for now, we want to turn this one up by an octave and we can turn it down uh, considerably. We can mix it in later on to taste. With this one, we can also put on quite a high amount of unison. Obviously, that depends if your CPU can handle it. And then with these ones, we're going to start to detune, uh, turn the detune down a little bit so that it's not as detuned. But what we're doing is we're kind of using these uh, multiple voices, again, to kind of simulate the sound of a reverb, but without actually applying too much reverb in the sound. The reason we're doing this is so that we can retain the strong transient of the sound. Often when you apply reverb, it kind of smears the transient of the sound. So simply, so simulating the sound of a reverb in the sound design process is a nice way of being able to retain the transient and actually control it as you build the sound. You hear how there's a kind of diffusion because of the unison. Okay, so here what I wanna do is I wanna use a high pass filter, set it to 24 dB and turn the resonance down quite a, uh, all the way. Um, and this way we can actually remove some of the low end from the sound to get it less tonal and more washy. And then as a final kind of little uh, cherry on top, I like to put a little bit of noise so here what we actually want to do is we want to make sure that all of these are set to filter one we're going to use this oscillator as well so just set everything to filter one so that it all goes through the high pass filter over here um so we add a little bit of noise into the patch just to give it a bit of kind of inconsistency a bit of washy again trying to simulate that sound of reverb um, and then here what i want to do is add a third oscillator with this one we can actually set it over to just a basic shapes sine wave we wanna turn this up two octaves, and then we're gonna tune this one in ever so slightly. So we can tune this into taste, but here again, we're gonna do this unison thing over here. Okay, so let's move on to the effects. So here what I wanna do is I wanna use this compressor to kind of just mush all the sounds together so that it sounds more like one single sound. But this compressor is very audible, so I generally mix it down quite a bit. You hear how it's given it that kind of shh at the end. That is kind of like, again, we are kind of simulating the sound of reverb by using the kind of nature of the white noise that's added using this type of compression. So what we can do is we can actually further fine tune the envelopes here to kind of get that sound to not be as drastic throughout.
Okay, so then here, let's add some more reverb. But here, we're not going to give it too much kind of big reverb. We're just going to add a little bit of a washy effect with the reverb, just so that that uh, tail that's added by the compressor is not as drastic. Okay, so I want to show you something about the processing of this. With these kinds of big, plucky uh, reverb sounds, I like to use a compressor, but with this one, I want to use it to more shape the transient of the sound. I guess we could do this with a transient shaper, but I want to show you something interesting here about how if we just pump the input over here and set the attack to maximum, it's going to have a time between when the sound originally plucks and the uh, compression hits its maximum. And what happens then is it kind of like shaves off a little bit of the body of the sound. So you get the pluck and you get the tail. So it's a nice way of being able to kind of transient shape the sound with just using a compressor. So here I'm going to overdo it so you can hear really like hear and see what's happening with these VUs. But notice you see how it kind of has that scoop there. And if we turn the attack down, you don't get that transient. So it's an interesting way of being able to like get that nice plug in a sound by just compressing it too much, you know? But with this one, I'm actually gonna reduce it a little bit so we're not compressing it too much. We're just using it for the kind of characteristics that, you know, the kind of dynamic shaping. I wanna use a little bit of EQ here just to remove some of the tonal low end, maybe a little bit of mid range, and then we can add a final reverb on the end here and just tune this down slightly. And then another little bonus, this sound over here. Basically the same sound. I just duplicated it, changed the envelopes back to default, and then removed the second and third oscillators that were just adding those extra harmonics. But if you look at the... Okay, well, the EQ is not actually doing anything here. Um, but, I mean, if you look at the way that the patch is laid out, it's basically the same patch. And then that just does these kind of... Uh, you see here these sequenced octaves. Super simple, but if you just get the groove right and you know where to place them in the mix, these really simple sounds can go a really, really long way. Awesome. That is about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to be uploading this preset to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.